here, let's talk about how uh, how closing a fiber absorber to the wall with the sides uh, improves the 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 response. Well, let's let's talk about spacing. Okay, first. Okay. Uh, I mean, spacing is a big. Uh, uh, it's a myth of our industry. Okay, yes. uh, people say if you take a fibrous absorber and you move it off the wall, it will increase the base response. Uh, if you if you restrict that to a certain distance, that's true. But when you exceed that distance, the effect goes away. And and the reason for that is what we call fluid dynamics. So if you have sound going through the material, okay, like this, it's going to go through that material and it's going to go hit the wall and come back. Okay. That's if it's on the wall. Okay. As soon as you take it off the wall, as you increase that distance, you're going to go through that surface and now it's going to hit air again and it's going to start to pressurize that air because now that's how it gets to a wall. It, as, it, as it slows down, as it gets to the wall, it's going to increase the pressure. That means the, the airspace behind the absorber is getting pressurized big time. Okay. Now, as long as you have this spacing off the wall and the boundary is not enclosed, the air will seek to live, to, to leave it. So think about what happens if you have anything where you push on it and there's space on the outsides. Where does that thing go? It goes out to the outside. So it you know, basically leaks. Okay. So it leaks air like crazy. In this case, it leaks pressure. Okay. If you look at it from a fluid dynamics point of view, if you exceed this situation uh, about one inch of space, the, uh, the back area will equalize in pressure as what the outside is. Therefore, it will be no more effect. If you have less than one inch or one inch or less, uh, you will have that air not able to escape as quickly as it's pressurized. And therefore, you get low frequency absorption. So the right. air will go in and absorb just like it is a piston. But and the water and it can't leak out fast enough, so it, it slows it down, absorbs it, and becomes uh, absorptive at that point. But if the air leaves the same rate it goes going in, there's nothing there. Therefore, it will not do low frequency. So now what you do is you enclose the edges with wood or metal or or whatever you want to to make it solid. Okay, now that air has no place to go when it's pressurized. Period. No matter whether you have four inches, six inches, or one inch. So in that case, the one inch limit disappears. Okay. And now you're going to have, be, you have to figure out how much air pressurization you get. That will change the frequency. And therefore, you'll have a different frequency of absorption at that point. And it will be continuous. And that's called E-mount. Okay. So yes. if you surround it and and, and it's sealed to the back, to the wall, and it doesn't have to be sealed with, you know, uh, acrylic or anything like that. Just make it tight to the wall, so there's no yeah. place for the air to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it doesn't have to have a seal on it. You could, it could be just against it. You have, you know, maybe a, a fraction Actually. of an inch. Yeah, yeah. If Thank you have you. a fraction of an inch of gap, it doesn't matter. The idea is to slow down the escape of the air. What you're trying to do. Yes. So it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be fairly close to the surface. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you'll have an increase in absorption, the low frequencies. And, and the only way to find that out is to, is to actually test it in place, uh, take it to a laboratory or whatever, and test that spacing with the material you have. And it will tell you exactly what it will do. Okay, But, but there's, no, there's no real formula for calculating that because it is, it is an exponential function. Mm. Okay. And, and, and everybody says, well, you can calculate exponential functions. Yes, you can. But there's a lot more to it than that. If you want to go into fluid dynamics, you can do that. I don't think of anybody in our industry wants to get into fluid dynamics uh, extensively to design a studio. If that's the case, and you're welcome to do it. You can have all kinds of fun with it. And it can be calculated using those fluid dynamics. But you're talking some very extensive mathematics at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I just don't think that that fits within the realm of what we're trying to do is is record sound and record music and stuff like that. And my experience has always been, as a general rule, I didn't say this all the time, but general rule is that uh, musician types are not really into heavy mathematics. <laughs> okay, now I, I want to make I want to make that as a as a uh, as uninsulting as possible because I'm a musician type and I like math mathematics. Okay, so if anybody asks, you know, 
am I a musician? Do I understand music? Yeah, I've been playing music since I was seven years old. I, I professionally recorded, got a million seller record. I play keyboards. I play organ. I play piano. I play the whole thing. Okay. And I've done it. I, I did it as a living for 12, 15 years. Okay. But the facts are, I also enjoy science and physics. And so there are people out there like me. There are a few of us that do, uh, you know, Brian yes. May is a, is, a, yeah. is a PhD. He's a, yes. Um, yeah. But not, it's, that's, it's the one percenters. <laughs> and that's exactly it. There, there's always, there's always exceptions to the rule, but the yeah. rule covers the majority. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm willing to work with anybody along the way, talk with them and stuff that educate as much as I can. But I just, I, 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 at some point, I lose uh, patience with people who insist on listening and try to argue when they're not arguing from a position of, of strength. I have no problem at all changing my mind about things if people show me data or show me facts that actually make me think and go, yeah, okay, that's true. But the facts are, uh, it doesn't happen as often as it used to. And I, I, I relegate that to the fact that as I get older and older, I learn more and more. And pretty soon there's only so many things you can, you can deal with. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, you know, uh, people say age doesn't increase your intelligence. No, but it sure helps. <laughs> it, it does because you gathered all this information that you and, have. And you also do. learn what you don't know. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Okay. And mm -hmm. you finally recognize, okay, I will never be, uh, a psychologist or a philosopher okay i will always be a scientist and involved in the field of physics my son-in-law is in chemistry and when he talks about it, i go okay uh hmm. let me go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> so you know the facts are that you will never know everything about anything you work on uh but you will always strain to get there yeah 